I believe, 90-plus plays against them. That's hard to bounce back from, yet they did it. Also, the Rams were coming off a game where they didn't play really well on the road against Chicago. We all expected them to get back in form at home. So, no, not many people saw that coming at all. Give Philadelphia credit. They've kept themselves alive for a possible playoff spot and a chance to defend their Super Bowl championship. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. A really nice gain of 25 yards. From the red zone now, wins. And incomplete, he dropped it in the end zone. Even without a ton of pressure in his face, it just shows how difficult it is to pick apart his own defense. Those guys are sitting back, and they're not playing receivers as much as they're playing the eyes of the quarterback and when he delivers the ball. Wentz will try again on second down. And he comes back with one complete. They face a third and four after that last completion gets them six. Now a play fake. Wentz sliding out of the pocket. And that is incomplete. These guys had to settle for a field goal their last time moving the ball down the field. They may have to do it again on this drive. That could be frustrating. Yeah, I don't want to be cliche, but at least they were able to get three last time. Three here, not the worst thing in the world. Oh, they flip it to the kicker. He looks like he's going to throw it. And all oh, the gamble fails. It's incomplete. They pass up the three, fake it. It doesn't work. Hey, we got a second here. Let's go back to week 15 following the win over Green Bay for Chicago. Happiness rained down on the field. The Bears claiming the uh, NFC North title, but one Bear took his celebration to an extreme. I know you saw this. Yes, I certainly did. Charles Leno Jr., left tackle for the Chicago Bears, got down on a knee and proposed to his girlfriend, Jennifer. So not only celebrating an NFC North title, but now his proposal accepted by Jennifer, who will now be Mrs. Jennifer Leno Jr.? No, no Jr. <laughs> no Jr. By the way, smart move, because she's not going to say no in front of 60,000 people. Well, I've seen it happen before. Not pretty, but not in this case. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Slips up past the 45 before being tackled. Back-to-back -back nice gains. That one for 14 yards and another first. At this stage of the game, the run-pass numbers are a little bit out of whack because most of the yardage is thrown through the air. But in a sense, that just sets things up for big runs like that because the defense might be a little bit off balance. They pick up another first down with that run. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. One thing to keep in mind, partner, especially in the second half, when you've got a running back of this size, of these dimensions, I can just tell you, attrition does set in for a defense because you're excited about hitting him in the first half. Maybe not so much in the second no, half, free. and some of these no, shorter free. gains turn into bigger runs later. Five. Five. On second down, here's gone. Eagle pressure too much this time. Down he goes. Michael Bannon in there to drop him, and it'll be a loss of about eight. So Goff, he'll try to refocus after the sack. The Rams now set up with a tough one, a third and long. 17, 17, 58, now Goff. And he fires one that's intercepted. Picked off around the 41. And the return comes to a halt right at the 44-yard line. And that's now the second time he's picked off a pass here in the first half alone. Again, another great read defensively. And you just see him get in the right position to make the play and get his guys the football back. Four down, four down, check, four down. 
Now it's the Boise State alum, Jay Ajayi. And he'll bring this one inside the 35. Nine yards is the pick up there, and they'll have a second and one. First play of the drive. Let's give credit all around. Excellent blocking, but a guy carrying the ball. He was the finisher. A really nice run. Two minutes remain here in the first half. We're back to the City of Angels after this timeout. Wentz to throw on second down. Flushed out right. Now he's going to throw deep right side. And this is going to be intercepted. John Johnson with the INT. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Okay, it's real simple to say from here, but we know that sometimes as a quarterback, you've got to know when to say when and just throw it away. Flushed out to the right, tries to make something out of nothing here, and he winds up floating one downfield that gets intercepted. picked second down well partner league wide i think we're set up for a wild month of january it seems like this season more than others we've had a number of teams that you maybe say hey they're the super bowl favorites kind of the rams early then it was the chiefs patriots kept winning than the saints and now heck maybe even the texans or the bears could claim that moniker yeah it's going to make for a wild month of january and you just it's wonder hard, right now are hard. we missing a team or two that's just a little bit outside the playoff hunt could they get hot and be those teams you don't want to play and carry that momentum all the way to the Super Bowl? Yes, I'm looking at the Indianapolis Colts as one of those teams. Bearing it out deep for one. And this is caught right along the sideline. What a job of keeping the toes in bounds there. A very nice pickup of 33 yards. So the line of scrimmage moves all the way across the 50 now as they come up first and 10. On first down, it's gone. Out left, he's got it to Everett. And he'll get it down here to the 43. That throw good for four. It's second down. And partner, I think that was a great example that not all tight ends are created equal because everything was right. Got the completion, but he's not one of the more dynamic guys in the league. So even though he caught it, couldn't turn it into much more. This is caught inside the 15. Touchdown, L.A. Brandon Cooks, 43 yards. And the Rams add on to their lead. And when a Hail Mary is completed for a touchdown pass like that, I think any defensive coordinator just puts their face right into their hands. I don't think there's any doubt about it. And I don't have stats in front of me. I don't have the empirical numbers that say that in recent years, the Hail Mary pass has been completed more than it has been. But it feels that way, doesn't it? And I know the defenses are spending more time on it. I think the biggest mistake they make so they play everything from behind the receiver. I think they've got to start getting people in front as well to try and knock the ball away. Zerline out now to kick this one away. This fielded at the two. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. Philadelphia getting sent to take the field. And last time, one play interception. So this offense, they should be fresh. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good way of putting it. And I can't wait to see what they decide to do with play calling because a one play drive where you throw an interception, a lot of people would think the very next time out, run the football, don't give them a chance. Maybe play action? I think maybe you go play action, show your quarterback, get a little confidence in it, and let him fling another one. Try to shake off the interception. He'll look to throw. And he bats it away, and it falls down incomplete. Alshon Jeffrey, the intended receiver, and that'll bring up second down. The one thing that I've liked defensively is that they've shown him a lot of different looks here in the first half. They've come after him. They've sat back. I think that's what you need to do to keep an offense guessing. And they certainly have kept them on their toes. That's why they haven't had much success on the scoreboard. 
Wentz again here on second and ten. And that one got tipped, kind of threw everything off. It brings up third. Martin, I think it's high time to get him some passes that he's comfortable with, some easy throws, some completions. He's not even hitting the 50% thus far. Well, certainly that has played a big role into why they are trailing right now. Now Wentz on third down. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. Seems like this defense, especially the secondary, has really been contesting about every throw in this first half. Remind me of a good half-court defensive basketball team. Every time a pass is thrown, they're right there in good, good defensive position, able to affect the play. 12 yards on the return that time. And the Rams will go on offense here with a first and 10. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. And we'll see how this is played. Offensively, they've got the lead. Not a whole lot of time left. What do you think, Charles? Well, it's tempting to try and add to your lead. But a mistake there, that can change things in a big way. I say go ahead, take the knee, get on out for the half. Escaping the pressure right. Now the ball comes loose. And the Eagles have recovered. He had gained really good yardage, but that's what you tell your quarterbacks, right? Get down after you've got the run. You don't have to prove your toughness. You know, I think that's what a lot of coaches are trying to preach to their guys. Get the yardage, get down, protect the football, and protect yourself from extra hits as well. After the fumble recovery, it's Wentz. Throwing the out route incomplete. It's Tate. And the stop here will come at the 38-yard line. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. But that's what you're looking for when you want to throw the ball downfield. You want one of those guys who can play out on the perimeter, can play out wide, who can not only get open, but when they're covered, can uncover themselves downfield and create catches. A second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. The Eagles on third down. 0 for 3 to this point. They could use a conversion. Here it's third and 3. Wentz going to throw. Looking deep downfield. Looking for Jeffrey, and it's intercepted. LaMarcus Joyner with a pick. And his guys have got it back at the closing stages of the first half. Fifteen seconds, all that remains for this first half as they come up first and ten. They'll try and start the drive with Gurley. Fights him off. First play of the drive going for 14 and a first down. So first and ten now from the 30. Play action. It's gone. He's going to sling this deep downfield. This is caught inside the 15. And he's in for the touchdown on the final play of the first half. The prayer is answered. How did they get that done? And they extend their lead, a little added cushion into the lockers. What a way to finish. Tremendous way. That's momentum that they carry in with them. Can they convert it and bring it back out to start the third quarter?